Junior Dragster. My name is Bill. If you haven't learned about it yet, go ahead and check out us, check us out at Junior Dragster Plus. Uh, that'll be you know I'll add a link at the uh, bottom of this uh, video here. And my name is uh, my username on the board is Wild Bill. Go ahead, ask it all the questions you want. There are no silly questions, just, you know, we've heard it all before, and we've all been there before, so go ahead, give us a shout out, and check us out, and we'll be more, we'll all be more than happy to help you. Now, on to the video. Well, welcome back to learning about junior dragsters, and hope you guys have been finding the videos helpful. Uh, today's video we're going to talk about replacing the needle and seat on the 33 millimeter Makuni carburetor. Um, pretty sure just about all the other carburetors are, you know, pretty close or similar in design, and, you know. So, let's just get to it. Alright, now that you're in close enough where you can see. <coughs> uh, let's see, first thing we're going to do is, uh, Take off the uh, throttle cable here. And we're actually going to take this off and just take it over onto the bench. Didn't mean for that to come all the way off. Let's take that out of the way. Disconnect our fuel line. Loosen up the bolts that hold on our... Now, at mandatory mechanical restraint system. This is a really nice one. Blossom, Ra Blossom Racing makes this one. They're one of the site sponsors on Junior Dragster Plus. If you haven't checked that out, click on Go ahead and make sure you check us out there. Get those two nuts off. Put them down here. Undo the clamp. Undo the clamp. And she comes right out. Now we'll go take it over to the bench. Alright. Now we got her over on the bench. <coughs> Let me go ahead and take this air filter off. Make things a little easier to work on. Whenever I'm doing carburetor work or anything, I like to lay out a, you know, nice brand new clean shop rag here to uh, <coughs> zoom out a little bit. Uh, wrong way. Get back there. Like I said, just, you know, every, anytime I'm doing something and I want to keep, you know, metal shavings or whatever might be, you know, this is just a wood workbench. You know, get dusty, dirty, slivers. Don't want to get that stuff in the carburetor. Alright, this particular carburetor of mine has, you know, like, standard they come with uh, Phillips head screws holding on the float bowl. Um, you're gonna, probably going to want to do like I've done and you know, those strip out over time. You're going to want to replace them with, I forget what size they are. I think they're an M4. You know what, we'll check one after we get them out here. But they are metric. 
so you're going to need to break out your uh, metric hex key set, you know, your little metric Allen keys. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. And if you try and go in here with a standard one, you're going to strip it out. But even still with, you know, even though the Allens don't like, aren't as prone to stripping out as the Phillips head screws that they come with, you can still strip them out, so you're going to want to be careful. Actually, that one, huh. That one looks like it's got a... Allen head broke, Allen wrench broke off in it. So we're definitely going to want to replace that. Probably have to go to the hardware store and get one. I don't think I've got any here. Oh, that one is tight. There we go. Let's see if I can give you a close up of this one here. You know, if you can see that little bit of shiny right there, it looks like whoever owned this, this is a brand new carburetor to me. You know, I just got this with the uh, engine I got. <coughs> Excuse me. And previous owner said that, you know, he was having a little bit of uh you know, overflow issues and uh, thought the needle and seat were bad. So I decided I'd just go ahead and replace it. But you can see there, looks like we got a little bit of a broken off Allen key in there. So let's we'll see if we can't get the vice grip to get that screw out. Nothing's ever easy. Yep, there she goes. Get it with my no. Can't get it with my fingers. At least it was in an area, there she comes, at least this one was in an area where I could get the vice grips on it. As you can see, see the, what, that one the way there, you know how covered that one is, I don't think you're ever getting vice grips in there. So maybe we'll put the new one in there. When we get a new screw for this one, replace this one. We'll just leave the, we'll just leave that one open and we'll put the new screw in that. go. There you can see we got our main jet. You know, if you look under here, we got our pilot jet. Here, let me bring this up here. Here we got our main jet. Under here we got our pilot jet. We got our floats right there. You know, down in here, 
that's where we're going for the needle and feet. Now, you see, we got we got a pin here, and we got to punch out, press out, get uh, this needle out. You know, this needle is out of here. Let's go see if we can't find a punch or what. Well, shouldn't take much. Shouldn't take much more than a tap to get that out. Let's see if we can't tap that down out of there. A little socket here supporting the ear. Shouldn't take much. Actually bending the yeah I am bending the ear over. Actually no, it looks like that ear is broke. not the end of the world anymore. It used to be, you'd have to take that in and get to uh, a welder to have them weld that back together. But Steve Waller, Junior Specialties, give a shout out to him because he makes some great products. And met him last year at the, uh, ran into him last year at the Easter Conference Finals. And he showed me a new little gizmo he's got that uh, basically is a piece of aluminum plate here that you know fits right in here between your bolt, you know, your screws and everything, and replaces these broken ears, gives your float bowl some, you know, floats, you know, a new float perch. I'll see if I can't post. I might be able to post a picture of that. There she comes. No, she's not broke off. <laughs> 